This is exactly right. And hello. And welcome to my favorite murder. The Minnesota. Where we read you your shit. Um, these are your stories of true crime. The ones you grew up with. The ones you experienced first. The ghost stories that your mom won't stop talking about. Things that happen in your family that are big secrets that aren't anymore. Really funny, weird shit you found in walls. Other stories that have nothing to do with true crime. Um, this is a random Minnesota about yeah. whatever we decide. <laughs> Do you want me to go first? Because I'm just chomping at the Oh, I love it. It's great when we're reading these and then one of us, like, read them to ourselves to to find out which ones we're going to tell and one of us starts cracking up. Yes. It's like, yay, this is going to be fun. <laughs> and it happens a lot. The subject line in this is the chainsaw chicken. Fuck yeah. Hi, Georgia, Karen, Stephen, and furry podcasters. No, absolutely not. Love it. My hometown murder isn't exactly a murder, but it's pretty freaking crazy, and I feel like you'll both enjoy it. I grew up in a small town outside of Portland, Oregon. When I was in middle school, a string of unexplained acts of vandalism shook my little town to Mm. its core. For several weeks, under the cover of night, a mysterious individual would take a chainsaw Mm. and cut down various trees and utility poles, (laughs) (laughs) causing them to land on nearby country roads and even fall across the town's main four-lane highway, Mm. familiar to many as Highway 26. The perpetrator always evaded capture, and the trees and utility poles often would cause power outages across the whole rural countryside. Oh, my God. My friend's older sister even drove her car head on (gasps) into a fell tree because she didn't notice it in time. (gasps) That's what I was going to say. That was super dangerous. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. It says in parentheses, don't worry, she survived with minor injuries. The individual was nicknamed the Chainsaw Chicken by the town (laughs) and the local news stations. I know. Super catchy. I love it. Uh, finally, the vandalizer, uh, is that a word in parentheses, was arrested and turned out to be none other than a boy from my middle school. What? <laughs> oh, you little fucking shit. Who Go was, to your room. <laughs> who was a couple grades younger than wow. me. Wow. He would use his family's chainsaw and disappear into the night. Oh, my God. Possibly committing these crimes as some kind of outlet. I really didn't know him that well, but he always seemed to be pretty quiet, but kind and unfortunately rather friendless. After Aww. his arrest, he disappeared in the juvenile detention system. Ugh. For all I know, he could be out of juvie by now. I would hope so. But like I said, this all happened in middle school, which was like eight years ago. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you for your time. And always remember to stay sexy and don't hang out with chainsaws or chickens. Bye, Maddie. Oh, my God. What if he's like a forester now or like works for the utility company? Whatever he's doing now, I need him to know that I'm in love with him. Yeah. The spirit, the audacity it takes to get up in the middle of the night and grab your parents' chains. I mean, just <laughs> wreaking havoc. Just fucking. What a little shit. The loudest yeah. havoc yeah. he could wreak. And how do you not get caught? He's a super genius. Like, yeah. you're, you're taking down an electrical pole what and you dick. seem to get away before anyone spots you. And or- then suddenly you're a 12 year old, <laughs> like out of the blue. It's just like, <laughs> boom, I'm 12. Fuck you, motherfucker. I'm 12, bitches. <laughs> Do you think he rode around on his, t- like on his BMX yes. bike with the chainsaw around like a, like a guitar yes. on his back? Yes. I love him so much. What's his name? I bet it's like it's Jimmy. Derek? Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy. It's something with a Y. Yeah. It's Jimmy. It's, yeah. It's something like that. Yeah. Or like, uh, Cody. Cody. That's a Cody move. That's such, such a, a Cody move. Taking a, uh, chainsaw. Cody, to- you little shit. Cody, Cody your room. Cody. God damn it, and Cody. Cody has like six other brothers, so he has no choice. It's oh, just yeah. like, well, I get beaten up every day, so I need to take a chainsaw this is the or something. the only thing I can do to get any. I can't tell you how many times in my childhood I wanted to take a chainsaw to everything in the town. Because of your sister, Laura. <laughs> go to your fucking room. <laughs> Laura, you right. made me. This is a founded wall story. Oh, shit. Which we always love. It's a pretty good one. Okay. Hi, MFM crew. 
My husband is a contractor in Seattle. Oh, these are all uh, Portland, Seattle, and Vancouver, Vancouver. stories since we're going to be there this weekend for live shows. We're teeing it up. What's up? Uh, <laughs> what's up? My husband is a contractor in Seattle and recently started working on a new project renovating a commercial space that is on a busy road in town. Yes. He began demolishing the walls and noticed a few odd small vials fall out of one. Oh. The vials are pinky sized, clear, and with some white powdery residue inside. Okay. They are also very old. <laughs> old cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> Just, per- Just per- age to perfection. Age cocaine. Okay. No, oh, this tastes like a 1912. Oh, yes. Mm. In the Basque region of France. <laughs> <laughs> a few of the vials have labels that are still intact and very clearly legible and say, quote, the name is Zonators. My husband immediately thought it was some th- something meant to go in a nose to stop nosebleeds, like mm. cocaine. Oh, yeah. Um, but as he found one with a complete label he realized he was wrong these are old school vaginal suppositories what then it says wtf that's <laughs> that is correct i work at a nearby clinic and he rushed over to show everyone and we had a good time speculating about what they did for the vagina and more importantly why they'd be in a wall perhaps the space used to be a pharmacy a medical clinic a brothel some old gal secret stash A quick internet search gave us more info about what, but not why. According to the National Museum of American History, these date back to the mid-50s and were meant as a feminine hygiene deodorizing product. (laughs) Man, the shit that women are supposed to put up their pusses. It's not good. It's never good. It's bad for you. The main ingredient was chloramine, which (gasps) is no longer used on or in our bodies as it is similar to chlorine. Oh, no. Then there's one exclamation mark in parentheses. And can cause tumors to grow. It sounds like these poor... Poor women were bleaching their vaginas. Here's a copy of the vintage ad we found stating. Are you ready for this? Yes. The only vaginal support system for feminine and hygiene. <laughs> Zonators completely deodorizes. They keep your person so dainty and feminine. A blessing to fastidious young wives. Oh, oh my god. No. I work with women in my I work with women in my clinic so we all thought it was pretty fitting a pretty fitting find. I have a couple of the vials now on display in my office and I giggle every time I see them. Thanks for keeping me entertained on my commutes. Stay sexy and keep your vag dainty, <laughs> Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> really just keep it as dainty as possible i i honestly wanted you and was hoping to god you were gonna say it was like cod liver oil or some <laughs> old-fashioned like that you terrible put the medicine i mean oh yeah just the idea that it was bleach is so fucking tragic i know, I know. it's disgusting yeah motherfuckers god Damn it. God the patriarchy. It. Go to your fucking room. <laughs> Get out of there. Go to your room with Cody. Take what? Cody. Bleach your t- fucking system. Fucking cut you down with a <laughs> chainsaw, motherfuckers. <laughs> no wonder I take a chainsaw to every goddamn light pole in my <laughs> tiny country town. Okay. The subject line of this one is, my dad kicked Paul Snyder out of a bar. Hi, all. Everyone's great. On to the story. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yes. Perfect. My dad was born in Vancouver. In his 20s, he worked and played a lot in the more infamous bars and nightclubs like the Marble Arch and the Number 5 Orange. Oh, that's a good those name. Sound, those sound like they're a fun time. That's a real cigarette holder kind of a place. Yeah, those are, uh, they got jazz cigarettes there. <laughs> Let's go get baked at the Number 5 Orange. Absolutely. Um, he was a bartender for many years before me and my siblings, before me and my siblings came along. Sorry. <laughs> I asked him if he'd ever had a break, had to break up a movie style bar brawl. He did. That's how he met my mom. Oh, that's hilarious and awesome. And if he'd ever had to kick anyone famous out, his answer, I nearly got glassed by that a-hole who killed Do- Dorothy Stratton. What? Of course, being a murderino, my ears pricked up and I asked for more details. Paul Snyder, the eventual estranged husband and murderer of Canadian playmate and actress Dorothy Stratton, yes. was once a regular on the Vancouver night scene. <gasps> my dad didn't know him, but said that no one seemed to actually like him. No, he was a piece of shit. Everyone knows. I bet his mom did. Okay. <laughs> Despite this, um, I actually started this book about her and it goes into detail of wow. what he was like. And he is like the guy. Well, I'll read this because she, her dad knows best. Okay. Um, my dad didn't know him. Oh, <laughs> my dad didn't know him, but said that no one seemed to like him. Despite this, he had connections and access, so maybe they couldn't get rid of him. Uh-huh. I'm kind of picturing a Canadian Begbie from Train Spotting. Oh, yeah. That's hilarious. According to my dad, he had a reputation for trying to pick up girls in bars and clubs and sometimes add them to his stable of sex workers that he kept 
kept as a small time pimp. Mm. He was even known to wear a long fur coat. Um, one night, Snyder was at a club my dad worked at and he was being super loud and obnoxious. My dad finally had enough and asked him to leave. But instead, Snyder tried to break a glass mm. across my dad's head. A bunch of people jumped in and helped my dad and get him out. The woman Snyder had been trying uh, to get to leave with him, thanked my dad and offered him some cocaine and thanks. <laughs> As things. <laughs> My dad is full of crazy stories like this. He said that when he and his friends heard that Dorothy Stratton had been killed, they, like many others in the community, felt a sense of guilt and loss. Aww. Like they'd let their little sister get eaten by the big bad wolf. Aww. Oh, that's sad. Anyways, thanks for reading. I'm so excited to see you in Vancouver in a few weeks. And my boyfriend is flying in from England to see you too. England? GM Jill. Bloody old Bloody old. Oh, well, oh, well. England, go to your room. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell we haven't recorded in a while. It's been a while. We're it's bloody having, old England. We forgot how to do this. <laughs> With America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. From step-by-step -step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and, and Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible, and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need. Break out of your dinnerette and make deliciousness part of every week with HelloFresh. I love that even though HelloFresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward, you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself. And that instead of just ordering takeout, I'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just, it feels good. So for $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Murder80 and enter Murder80. It's like receiving eight meals for free only at HelloFresh.com slash Murder80, promo code Murder80. Go by. Let's see here. This um, is what people come for is the impression. <laughs> right. <laughs> to be sent to their room. <laughs> okay. This one I think is the funniest one I've ever read. Okay. Okay, ready. This is called <laughs> This is called uh the haunted flip phone. <laughs> Perfect beginning. <laughs> Hi ladies and Steven. Oh. <laughs> Uh, just a really quick story I had all but forgotten until uh, forgotten forever until it re reappeared in my memory bank late last night in bed when I should have been sleeping. In the early 2000s, I was a preteen and very excited when I got my first flip phone, mostly just to call my family members and one friend every few weeks. I remember receiving a text randomly from my mom one day that said, Terry is dead now. <gasps> and Terry spelled T-E-R-Y. <laughs> Uh, I was so confused and asked my mom and she said she definitely did not send that and had no idea who Terry was. Ooh. For weeks, my sister and I were so freaked out trying to figure out who Terry was and we were so worried she died or some and some creepy ghost or murderer texted me and I was the only one who knew. I even thought of telling the police in this case in case a woman named Terry had turned up dead and I <laughs> held a missing clue. Maybe this uh, maybe this is the beginning of my true crime fascination. I laid in bed every night for weeks, so worried that Terry was dead and no one knew but me and the flip phone ghost might return to haunt my text messages. <laughs> to me, it seemed like months like this went by. Maybe it was days. My memories are a little skewed from back then. Hmm. Finally, one day, after talking about dead Terry again, my mom suddenly had an epiphany. She looked at her old text messages in her flip phone and started cracking up. She exclaimed that she had solved the Terry mystery. She showed us a text message that was supposed to... Uh, be sent to me that said my battery is dead now somehow the my <laughs> bat part had been cut off and suddenly the biggest mystery of my life was solved <laughs> shitty cell service has created the most creepy text that haunted my dreams not a ghost or a murderer terry was not dead all was well in the world <laughs> that's all love you guys and can't wait to see you in portland i'm dragging my non-murdering friend along so please tell very disturbing stories and freak the fuck out of her love samantha oh my god <laughs> terry, is terry is dead, dead now <laughs> I didn't send that. I deny everything. <laughs> also, Terry is such a specific... It's like a British man from the 70s. Yeah. T-E-R-Y. It's, it's like you can picture it. Yeah. Okay. This is, simil this is similar, but um, it's 
the subject line is deathbed confession lighthearted <laughs> <laughs> no, Georgia Karen Stephen Petz three years ago my mom was in the last stages of dying of cancer in the last week she told me she had a confession to make that she had kept a secret from me for almost 30 years oh my god I was expecting some sort of tragic accident or I was adopted or something no when I was a kid I wrote a letter to the Lucky Charms people that I had gotten a box of cereal with almost no marshmallows the company sent me an apology letter and a coupon for a free box my mom admitted to me that she had actually eaten all the marshmallows but hadn't wanted to admit it for 30 years (laughs) can't wait to see you in vancouver in october elizabeth oh my god and that she had she couldn't pass on without admitting she it. had to tell her the truth about the lucky charm that is the sweetest most adorable thing i'd oh. ever and then she's like and you're adopted too bye <laughs> <laughs> oh my god everyone needs to have a deathbed confession that's like well also fun. don't save them for the deathbed yeah it's how funny would that have been? i mean like it's still hilarious no, it's, but it's like it also you know what it is it paints a picture of what her mom was like yeah because i immediately was like i bet you she's one of those moms she probably didn't overeat she was like zoned out in the kitchen yeah and started doing and, and then caught herself and was freaked out yeah and then the next morning her daughter was like why are there any and like her <gasps> daughter freaked out about it and like wrote a letter and like <laughs> and she just had to stand there going i, I don't know. know it's crazy there's no marshmallows well, you know what you have to do in a situation like this <laughs> you have to stand up for yourself you stand up for yourself and you let those people know <laughs> how unfair it is her name's cody with an eye cody you need to write a letter Go to your room. Uh, send us your funny, weird, fucked up shit. Deathbed confessions great. are great. I lo- I want to know more. Ugh. They don't have to be good. They can just be like that one. Yes, exactly. They don't. Ha- well, they don't have to be like juicy. Right. I didn't mean good, as in like. Yeah. I'm not calling you, Cody. I'm sorry. Okay? <laughs> Look, Cody. Um, it's Elizabeth. Elizabeth. I'm it was sorry. Elizabeth. I called you Cody. Cody is the code name for. Uh, the Destructos. Cody's short for Elizabeth, isn't it? Yes, um, that's what... <laughs> up in the North Northwest. <laughs> in the Pacific Northwest, they do things a little differently. They do things weird. Send um, us your letters. My favorite murder at Gmail. We want to just hear anything weird and funny. Yeah. And we can't wait to come and see you, Pacific Northwest. Yeah. The home of all murders. <laughs> um, stay sexy. And don't get murdered. Goodbye. Goodbye. Elvis, want a cookie? Goodbye.